The HR Stories podcast is brought to you by the team at HR Stories. The team at HR Stories helps businesses and nonprofits better manage the employee experience by providing the tools, training, and resources they need to take their organization to the next level. To learn more, go to our website, thehrstoriesteam.com. Each week on the HR Stories podcast, management and HR consultants Chuck Samikian and John Tallheimer dive into the stories that matter to small business owners, nonprofit leaders, and of course, HR professionals. We continue to be amazed at how many companies allow poor decision-making, lack of knowledge, and in some cases, hubris to cause harm to their organization. Each week, we discuss stories where companies must pay large fines, lose great talents, or even stain their reputation within the community. And we tell you how to avoid the same fate. Welcome to the HR Stories Podcast, where there is a lesson in every story. On this week's episode, John and Chuck talk HR and artificial intelligence and how it's impacting every part of human resources. But first, here's what's happening in the HR news. Hello, John. I'm Chuck Samikian. I'm co storyteller here at HR Stories. And who are you? Oh, I know who you are. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, everyone. I am John Tallheimer co-storyteller here at HR Stories. We're excited to go out and news going on today. What have, what have you been paying attention to, Chuck? Well, as uh, we know, the the Pump Act went into full enforcement on April 28th. And John, you loaded up on the HR Team of One community on Facebook. Right away, you found out that uh, last week, the the Department of Labor updated the FMLA poster to account for the amendment of, uh, or amended it to account for the Pump Act as part of the FLSA. So that was a great catch. And folks, go and download that new poster about FMLA. The good news is you don't have to panic, right? And so they are still allowing the 2013 and the 2016 version of the FML poster to be good, but we do here at the team at HR Stories do recommend getting the new poster. You can go to the Department of Labor, go to their search bar, put in FMLA posters. Boom, it's there. Print it out. You have it. Um, that's the simplest way to do it. Yeah, you know, they. it is funny. They kind of snuck that out there. Usually they make a big deal of this stuff. And you're right. They kind of just snuck it in there and people panicked. But like you said, don't panic. Everyone calm down. We're good. Everyone's good. They're giving a little time for everyone to get kind of acclimated to that. Yeah. And I think, and again, it's important to make sure our, all of our posters, not just the FMLA posters, are updated on a regular basis and making sure that we're communicating them out. So there can be never a place where an employee said, well, I've never seen the poster. Um, that's our job in HR is to make sure those set, those words are never issued from one of our employees' mouths. So making sure that we do that as well. What else you got going on, Chuck? Well, as I have uh, stated a few times and I stated in some classes, there are companies that are constantly, I guess, font, fonts, fountains, shall we say, of of employment law news. Just always <laughs> having something coming up. Uh, you can always yeah. count on Walmart to have some employment law news. Chipotle, Dollar General, those are my three go-tos. I always find something with them. <laughs> this week, uh, actually the, a couple days ago, last week, it was Hobby Lobby in the news again. Yeah. And and it actually is a continuing theme that we've picked up and it has to do with the Americans with Disabilities Act. It has to do with service animals and it has to do with well, not just dismissing a request out of hand because Hobby Lobby had to pay $50,000 to settle an EEOC charge that this store in Kansas refused to allow a worker with a service dog to be a reasonable accommodation. And, you know, the dog, the worker said helps with anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, was a cashier at the store, put in the request to use the dog, submitted medical documentation, but the store district manager and HR decided, hey, it's going to present a safety issue, and they shut it 
down. And the whole aspect of this, as I've read into this case, was it, there was no interactive dialogue. I mean, there was a, the first part of the interactive dialogue was there, but the rest of it, as far as let's look at other accommodations, let's look at some options. But the EEOC basically has said companies that have this maybe unfounded fear of something like, oh my gosh, a dog will cause problems. A dog will do this. A dog will do that. That's not an excuse not to go. It may be true. It may not be in a, a reasonable accommodation, but the key is you've got to go through that whole interactive process, John. Yeah. And, and I will add another little part to that story because Hob, this is not the first time this has happened to Hobby Lobby. Um, they, they, a very similar story happened to them uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Um, and what the plaintiff said, so what the employee said was, wait, you're allowing customers to bring in their service animals, but you're not allowing me to bring in my service animals. Oh, that uh, was, yes, yes. Right. And so you, you got it. Like you have to be consistent with your policies across the board you can't be like, well, this group can allow them in and this group can't, right? And so, again, I think Chuck has a really good point in thinking about, oh, what is that interactive process? Let's make sure we go through it and then document, document, document. Having the conversation is not enough. You have to document. We all know that in HR land, but gosh, making sure our managers and our directors and our supervisors know how important that documentation is critical. Um, getting them up, making sure they learn that as well is so important. Bam, you got it. John, you're going to bring a new feature to the podcast today. Very excited. I, I, I have a new feature. Um, I go on one story before we get into this new feature. Sure. So I was reading the business journal here in Nashville, right? The Nashville business journal. And they were, they were talking about Nashville, obviously up and coming city, Hundreds of people are moving here to this area every day. So lots and lots of going on. Salaries have risen in Nashville year over year, 6.8%. Whoa. Right? And so that's a little that's a little above the national average. The national average, I think, don't quote me on this, is like 4.6. Right. And just so everyone needs to be aware that this salary increases, this upwardly forward push on salary is happening across the uh, country. And it has a lot of different reasons to it. A lot of it's supply versus demand. A lot of it has to do with increases in minimum wage. But we as HR professionals and executives and leaders have to be paying attention to that because what's happening is our employees are paying attention to it. They're having conversations going, oh, I could make 20%, 30% more at this company. And boy, 30% more, there's hardly anything that's going to keep an employee if they can go make 30% more somewhere else. And so kind of paying attention to our salary levels is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good call. Good catch. Good catch. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? Dun, yeah, dun, new dun, feature, dun. folks. Hey, hey Sam. Can we get a graphic for our YouTube version of this? Uh, I don't know what it's going to say. It's going to be Ask Chuck and John, something, something clever. You're cleverer than Chuck and I are. Um, that would be fantastic. All right, so here's our new feature, and I have two today. We're going to start off with two, Chuck. Normally, we'll just do one. So listeners and members of our Facebook group have been asking us questions, and we thought it would be beneficial to answer to them all out loud to everybody, just instead of going back and forth on one person. So here's the first question, Chuck. All <laughs> right. Can an employer be held liable for alcohol-related incidents at an off-site function? Oh, wow. Can they? Well, hey. you know, John, if I have to just uh, preface this by using one of your favorite quotes, Hey, I'm in HR. Yes, no, maybe it depends, right? <laughs> yeah. It it depends. Uh do you uh do you want me to take my first shot at it or do you want to Yeah, you, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I'm not, that's a, that's, ah. you know. 
Okay. Yeah. So no, no. Yeah. I got it. Well, got it. it just depends. Uh, and I will say that in, uh, if, if the an overall answer is probably, okay, but the degree uh, depends. For example, let's say we have a big event and we have a sponsored event and it's at, let's say Dave and Buster's or one of these big box type places. And, and I give everyone, you know, a thousand tokens, uh, you know, whatever they're going on and you could get pizza, you get whatever you want, but there's a bar there, right? There's a bar. And so the employee on their own, their own time, I'm not paying them. They go and they get a drink. Uh, while they are drink or two while they're at this company event, probably gone, not going to be as liable because I didn't provide the bartender. I didn't provide the alcohol and they bought it out of their own money. I provided the pizza and everything like that. But if I have a big event and I say, okay, we're just going to be at a convention center. We bring in a bartender, even if it's a cash bar, I am more liable for that yeah and then let, let's take it to the even the, the farthest thing let's say we have an event in the workplace and the boss brings out a case of beer or a bottle of bourbon um right and starts passing the bar you know not passing the bottle around but you know giving <laughs> people drinks out of the bottle or giving everyone a beer and that kind of stuff and then one of those employees leaves the workplace gets in a car accident the company is going to be liable for that for sure. Right. right? And not only yeah. for that employee, perhaps, but for any other damage or injuries they cause uh, someone that is absolutely not even related to the employee and the situation. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I th again, I think Chuck has it right, right? It, it depends on the situation. And the goal here is always to try to reduce your liability risk as much as possible. Right. And so you will hear some HR people say absolutely no alcohol at any single HR work functions. And you'll have other people going, well. And so I always sit there and like, what is the risk to my organization? Uh, do I have a widespread of individuals, maybe individuals that are not going to hold their alcohol or deal with it? Or is it going to be a very formal thing where, um, we're going to have an award ceremony. It's going to be very formal. We're going to serve dinner. We're going to have everyone's going to get one glass of wine. Again, the risk is probably pretty low. Yeah. And so, I mean, the other challenge here, Chuck, is let's say you do have an event at Dave's and Buster's uh, and it's a work event and somebody drinks before they come to that event um, and we don't take any action that could be we could be liable for that. Right. And so. Sure. Especially if you see there. that they are drunk, especially if yeah. you see it, you know. Yeah. Right. And so uh, I think it's a really good question. I think it's something that maybe doesn't come up as much at this time of year. We really get in those conversations in November. In fact, if I'm remembering right, you did a great, I think it was like the top 10 things you need to think about holiday parties or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, last November. Um, hey, if you guys want that, just send us an email. All our email information will be in the notes. Uh, we'll send it to you, um, but we'll make sure that we bring that back out during holiday season. Maybe we can bring that out this summer, Chuck, uh, in barbecue season. Barbecue season, sure. Right. There you go. Well, those are great answers. Uh, and the other the only thing I would add to that is just like sexual harassment, it's an, it's an employee event. Uh, you, all these protocols are still in place. It's an employee event, right? It's a workplace yeah. event. Everything covers that kind of stuff. In fact, you said something earlier, um, you kind of slid it in there, but if it is a workplace event and it's a mandatory workplace event, whether it's on site at Dave and Buster's and you're saying people, you need to be there or one of your managers is saying, well, you better be there. You better be paying them for that. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so that's there. All right, question number two of our listener questions. Maybe that's what we should call it, Sam. The listener questions. Let me you know. I'm trying to think of something good. You're better than I am at that stuff. So I'm just throwing it. All right. All right. Here we go. And this is a good one. This is a Facebook question, Chuck. Wondering how everyone feels about being Facebook friends with others in their organization. Yeah. So, folks, this is from the team of 
HR1, uh, the HR Team of One community on Facebook. Uh, someone posted this, and it's about Facebook. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I could say that an overall rule would be, especially if you're in HR, not to be Facebook friends with your your company employees, your coworkers, and or your um, your the 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 general the gen pop. I guess you could say the general population out there, uh, primarily John, because you're Facebook friends with them today. Tomorrow you could be sitting across from them, perhaps exercising a termination or some sort of documentation counseling. It makes it very, very uncomfortable. Uh, so that's what LinkedIn's for, by the way. That's what LinkedIn's for. I would not. I have been Facebook friends with coworkers and. Usually these are people that I knew before I started working at that particular company. Uh, I also know people have our Facebook friends because they've been maybe working at a company for 20 years and they, well, they make friends, right? It, and it does happen. But when you're HR, you just have to kind of set yourself apart as uncomfortable as it may sound a little bit. Yeah. I mean, and I will say, and I've always said this to managers, not always, obviously Facebook hasn't been around for always, but um, I've always told managers not to be friends with their employees. And the reason I give is, let's say your employee calls out sick mm -hmm. and you go on their Facebook page that day and there they are at the ballpark having hot dogs and beer and enjoying themselves. And you're like, what? You caught out sick and I needed to get this done. And all of a sudden now you're upset because of something they did outside of work. Um, or what if they post something that you find uh, harassment or discriminating or bias and you're like, what? Right. And so I think, I mean, again, Chuck and I, I know we're, we're probably different generations than some people. And I get it, right? Generation Z grew up on Facebook. They connect with Facebook. That's just the way they do it. Um, I just want you to be careful thinking twice about who you connect with on Facebook. And I, what I would love for the listeners, look, comment on our podcast and tell us, no, you guys are wrong. Those guys are crazy. Why, this is how I handle it. I want to hear those. Um, we may be wrong in this case, but I feel pretty strongly that I think both Chuck and I have the right perspective on this. And so yeah. kind of thinking about that. So. All right. Good answers. Good oh, answers. Yeah, I, love, I love this new segment. I hope we keep it going. Um, Samantha, hint, hint. Um, but it's a good segment. And I definitely think we want your questions because, look, Chuck and I can talk about all these topics that we hear about, but that's not helping you. Um, we want to hear from you like, oh, we had this situation. How would you deal with this? We want to know... Um, I heard, read this in the news. How that? How is that going to impact my industry and my state? Um, ask those questions. We'll dive into them at you know, one, probably one a week. Uh, we'll dive into that. So or one yeah. episode, I would say. Absolutely. So, John, what are we going to talk about today? I honestly, um, I want to talk about the uh, Sixers versus the Boston Celtics, but you probably <laughs> want to talk about important HR stuff. I don't know. Well, yeah. you know, as we, and I know we probably have a, a, a break coming up here, but you know, John, AI is here, literally here and everywhere. Oh, it's, yeah, it's crazy, right? It's happening all over the place. Uh, every time I turn on Facebook, my email, it's blowing up. Everyone's talking about it. Probably something we should probably talk about. Absolutely. In fact, I've seen a lot out there about a HR and AI, people are teaching classes about how does HR and AI combine? People are writing apps. Uh, it is blowing wide open. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Chuck? Why don't I know your story is about artificial intelligence, right? Am, am I correct? Yes, uh, it so is. Okay, well, so let's dive in and let's take a break because we're about the 20 minute mark. Um, and then, then we'll come back. What do you guys think about that? Sounds great. All right. You've been listening to the HR Stories podcast where there is a lesson in every story. We will take a quick break and we will be back. Hello, listeners. I have some questions for you. Do you find yourself struggling with 
HR and employment issues? Are you afraid you could make the wrong employment decision that will cost your company thousands or even millions of dollars? Maybe you're new to the world of HR or you've been in HR for a while and you just wish you had one resource, a guide to help you get HR right. Well, I've got good news for you. The team at HR Stories is excited to announce a new comprehensive resource, the Ultimate Book of HR Checklist. We created the Ultimate Book of HR Checklist as a simple step-by-step -step resource guide packed with 70 downloadable checklists and other resources that help small businesses and organizations get human resources right. Even with very little HR or management experience, you can get instant results with concise, practical steps for addressing many of your tough employment issues. Do not miss out. Go to hrchecklist.com to learn more. That's hrchecklists with an S, dot com to learn more. And as always, thanks for listening to the HR Stories podcast, where the lesson is always in the story. Welcome back. We've been talking about the world of AI and how is it going. Now, Chuck, I know you were doing something, I think it was in Wisconsin, you were going to do a presentation and AI got involved. I'm not sure. I remember it kind of sketchy in my head. Yeah, no, you know, here's the deal. Uh, I have been fascinated with this chat GBT AI. I've been playing around with it and doing some things. So I thought, hey, I'm going to, you know, I, there's some great things about AI and, and positive, but there's some sketchy things that I've seen. For example, I was going to do a class in Wisconsin. And so I thought, I wonder what the Wisconsin sexual harassment laws are. I went ahead. I typed in Wisconsin sexual harassment laws. And it came up with all this stuff. I'm like, wow, look at that. And then I realized, I thought, well, that sounds kind of odd. So then I looked at it through some other ways that we have using HR Help Desk and a few other things. And well, voila, a uh, AI chat made the whole thing up, made the whole <laughs> thing up. If I had just listened to that, I would have been like, looked, I would have looked really stupid in that class. And what have I been telling you, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You've been warning me. You've been warning. So then I said, okay, I really want a good story. A couple of weeks ago or so, we wrote a story. We did We did a podcast on retaliation, constructive discharge. And I said, I wonder if AI has a story or a news story that I could use. Well, I typed in, I asked ChatGBT, and it gave me this unbelievably detailed story about uh, this lady at Penn State in the athletic department and her boss and how he sexually harassed her, how much money she won and how it was a landmark case for. And I was like, wow, I went to Penn State. I This is amazing. <laughs> well, I did the research. The people were real. But everything else was completely made up. Well, it wasn't made up. It was scrubbed from, you know, all the knowledge that is out in the world, but it was put together in a way that made it false. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and so and, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to ask you what your story is for today. I was, I was moving oh, sure. along. Sure. I, well, I'm it's getting a long in my story. ears. Samantha's like, move it along, John, oh, yeah. move it along. Well, here's the deal. I, I will tell okay. you that when 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 AI has these things that they make up, the developers are calling it hallucinations. And oh. so, yeah, it's a real AI thing, hallucinations. But I have a positive story today. I actually okay. have a story about an HR manager named Sarah who actually has completely embraced the world of HI, a, uh, AI for HR. Uh, and what she has done is absolutely amazing and i really wanted to share it with you today and our listeners here on the hr stories podcast i'm looking forward to this i'm, I'm looking forward to this story because you've been selling it all week to me like you can't wait until we record the podcast i got this great story so you're on man this is it you better make it good yeah well look sarah works uh and uh, worked at a progressive technology company called innovate tech and okay. it was known for its commitment to leveraging these cutting edge technology in all aspects of its operations. And Sarah was 
eager to explore the potential of HR and its applications in HR to transform the employee experience. So, really? yeah, so Sarah's journey began in AI when in, in innovative tech decided to revamp its recruiting process, you know, with the help of the AI. Life. Yeah. Well, with the help of these AI power tools, Sarah automated the screening of resumes, allowing her to focus more on engaging with potential candidates. The AI algorithms analyzed resumes, matched qualifications and skills with the job requirements, made the selection process more efficient and actually precise. Really? More precise? That's not what I've heard <laughs> um, in, in the day, right? I mean, again, I think this was before AI, um, but a lot of the algorithms, right? Now that's the term they use a lot of the times early on when they were using algorithms, uh, they were knocking away qualified candidates. But I love that Sarah has been able to find technology that's been more precise. Sure. And as you and I both know, since uh, this time, the EOC Department of Labor has issued some warnings and concerns about uh, perhaps potential bias. So, okay. but in this case, hey, Sarah was pretty excited about the, the results. She delved further into the capabilities. She introduced some online assessment uh, that used the AI algorithms, uh, streamlined the evaluation process, and what she felt was fair and accurate assessments to get highly skilled candidates. So she amped That's it up. Right. Yeah, amped it up a little bit more. Um, she saw more about the positive in recruitment. She said, well, what about employee learning and development? And so the AI systems analyze individual learning patterns, uh, recommended personalized training programs. Employees receive tailored suggestions. Like I mean, it's amazing. You know, the approach yeah. not only enhanced employee satisfaction at her company, but also improved overall productivity and performance. We're always talking about people about customizing their training for that individual. And now you have a system that is able to do that. Wow, this is fantastic. Keep going. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I know Sarah is pretty good. She's very cutting edge on this. And you know, she integrated AI and worked with a developer uh, and she created something called HR Bot. And she, oh. yeah, she integrated it into the company's internet and HR Bot became the go-to resource for employees assisting with you know, general inquiries, providing information on company policies, procedures, even automated routine administrative tasks like leave requests, benefits enrollment, and it freed up Sarah's time to focus on more strategic HR initiatives. Love it. You know, I love strategy. I know you do. I know. And look, <laughs> it gets even better. You see, in the right. realm of performance management, which I know you are a big, you know, you're a coach. Performance management is, is real big for you. You, 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 um, you meet with clients, you, you take them to the next level. Well, guess what? AI um, helped Sarah ensure unbiased performance evaluations. Uh, she relied on some data-driven insights, which encouraged fairer evaluations and ultimately led to a more motivated and engaged workforce. Are you saying that I'm going to be out of a job? That's uh, This is what I'm hearing from you. Oh. I, I don't know. I don't know. This was just Sarah's experience, but okay, you know, all right, that's good. You know, look the the impact of AI extended beyond individual employees. With the help of all of this stuff, predictive analytics, she gained the ability. Get this, John, to foresee, and this is huge. Future uh, workforce demands identify potential skill gaps, and she was able to collaborate with department heads and implemented effective workforce planning strategies to make sure Good. innovative tech has always had the right talent in place. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Sarah's journey continued. She witnessed, you know, innovative tech just uh, did amazing stuff. And her involvement transformed that HR landscape at innovative tech, that marriage of AI and HR folk 
fostered a culture of continuous improvement, personalization, data-driven decision-making, and guess what? Here's the, here's the kicker. Employee satisfaction soared. Turnover rates declined. The company flourished. How was their engagement scores? Um, I, I don't have the specific scores, but apparently they were, they must have been off the charts. They must have been wow. off the charts. I mean, you think know, about that, right? Thinking about using something that can get us high level engagement. I, wow, that's amazing. It is. It is. But look, it doesn't end there because then Sarah realized, hey, here's an innovative application that really grabbed her interest. AI generated job postings. Yeah. Not job descriptions, but job postings. You know, technically job postings, people just take the job description, they put it out there, they're dry, uninspiring, <laughs> filled yeah. account. Yeah, they fail to capture the essence and excitement of the role they represent. So Sarah went ahead and she started feeding the AI job descriptions. She said, create something for me, create engaging job posts. And it infused creativity, personality into the hiring process. Uh, they highlighted necessary qualifications, painted a vivid picture of the company, culture, growth opportunities. It generated, John, a surge of interest from highly skilled candidates eager to join innovative tech. Yeah, I mean, job postings to me have always been, they should always be a mini marketing device for your company, right? And so putting all those things in there, that's a fabulous way to do it because now people are thinking, gosh, I wanna work at that company. Why should I work with you? Should be the number one answer of job postings. And obviously it sounds like Sarah's found a way to do that. That's probably easy and a very effective. Yeah, and and look, she got all kind of accolades for the innovative job postings. Candidates were excited to work there. The success prompted uh, her to start collaborating with more HR professionals. She's become, John, an inspiration for HR professionals um, across her region of the country and beyond. She's proven that AI and HR Get this, AI and HR, and this is specifically a quote, was not about replacing human interaction, interaction, but rather enhancing it. The blend of AI and human expertise created a harmonious synergy that propelled innovative tech to new heights, setting benchmarks for future HR projects. So here's my question for you, Chuck. I know you're fantastic. You're a great co-storyteller. I'm a great co-storyteller. But here's my question for you. Why didn't you call Sarah and get her on here? We need her on the show, don't we? We need her on yeah. the show. Yeah. We definitely need her on the show. Well, here's the yeah. deal, John. The great reveal. Should I do the drum roll? <laughs> the deal is, John, Sarah doesn't really exist. So, what? Yo, yes. Oh my gosh. Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you telling me that this story was made up? This story was made up. And I didn't uh, make it up, John. I didn't. What? Word for word, AI created this story. I simply asked it to tell me some ways that AI could transform the HR experience. And then I said, can you write me a story about an HR manager that uses all of those eight points? And it spit I can't it out. It. I can't believe it, Chuck. You lied to me, I'm leaving. Oh my gosh, folks, he's leaving me. He's leaving me. This is, um. well, I am a little disturbed, a little disappointed in you, Chuck, that you didn't let me in on this little secret of yours. I'm, I'm Now I want to go back and look at all the other podcasts to see maybe if you've been using AI in the past. Oh my, oh my. Well, well, let's, let's face it, right? I mean, it was a good story. You let us down, Chuck. I just want, I'm speaking for the audience now. You did have us like, oh my God, my life's going to be so much better. I can work with employees. I don't have to deal with all this administration crap. Yeah, 
And so what's your opinion on AI? I um, mean, other than you like to use it to falsify stories on the podcast, what, yeah. what's going on? Well, I think there is a future for some of these things. I think, um, but as AI said, uh, if I may quote, said, uh, AI is not about replacing human interaction, but rather enhancing it. And I have to tell you, this story word for word, it went on and, and I cut some things out. I edited some things oh, because no. AI <laughs> loved to talk about itself, right? But there it are some, yeah, but there are some possibilities. I mean, I, I have uh, taken a look at job uh, the the you know the function of saying okay let me try and see if I can create maybe some uh in maybe fun or innovative job postings uh, there there is opportunity for some of this but I still think you still have to have some sort it's like having the smartest person in the room but sometimes the smartest person may not have the most common sense shall we say or they may have an off day or yeah they may have like have hallucinations. I don't know. So you always have to kind of trust, but verify. But I think there are possibilities here that, and it, we're still a little bit away. We may not be that far away, but of using AI for some of these applications, as I described in the story. Yeah, no, and I, I do like the story. I was just kidding you. Um, Again, I think it's an interesting thing, right? Well, now we have this uh, tool, let's call it a tool, that we can use to be more effective and efficient in our jobs. However, like any tool, you got to know how to use it, right? And so you and I have both experimented with it and we put in questions into it and we've got answers that make absolutely no sense in the real world. And so I know you and I've had conversations about this. And to me, it is like having that. It's like having another person in the room. I'm not going to say the smartest person in the room, but it's like having another person in the room that has another perspective right. that we should take into play, but not be like 100% trust that person. They're always going to tell us the right thing um, because we know, especially now, human resources is very complex. Dealing with human emotions is very complex. Making sure that we get things right, we need a human, we need a human resources professional. Um, that's not going to eliminate it. But where it will help us is redoing some of the works. I love the concept of, and we've seen this in some other companies, where, um, well, we see this in customer service a lot, right? And so let's say, I well, I had this situation where, my computer was not working properly, right? And so I went to Dell and I went to the chat and they had a chat box, mm -hmm. a bot, right? And that chat bot was like, well, did you try this? And did you, and it eliminated all the simple ways that I could have been messed up. And I still needed to talk to that person, but think of all that conversation that was cut out and save so much time and effectiveness. So I see a lot of that being played out in the AI space and really helping us. Um, so I, 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 it's very interesting. I, you know, I could go on and on and talk about this forever. Oh, sure. And I know we've gone on for a while, but if I have to give a, a final thought, uh, there is an article that was in a study that was published this past, uh, oh, uh, probably late April. And it was, it was a group of researchers from Stanford University, Digital Economic Laboratory, and, the, and MIT, and they found out that customer support agents that were given access to a generative artificial intelligence assistant to help them do their job increased yeah. their productivity by 14%. So I thought that was yeah, I read that, interesting. I, I read that article. What I thought was fascinating was... What happens, so somebody kind of see this, right? You have a customer service rep talking to somebody on the phone and what happens now is they have frequently asked questions, right? And so um, and so what they do is they type in, the customer said this to me or, the, or the, they record it down and AI says, well, here's possible answers. And so then that, that work person, that employee can then make a decision. Do I want to use the AI answer or 
based on my experience, this uh, is what the customer wants to hear. Sure. Um, and so over time, of course, that's going to get better because AI is going to hear the professionals over and over and over again. Yeah. And John, the real twist here is I'm not real, John. I am AI. Thank you for listening to the HR Stories podcast, where there's a lesson in every story. I'm kind of freaked out. <laughs> Is really not real? Because I've been talking to him for a couple of years now. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit worried. All right, folks. Thanks uh, for listening to the HR Stories podcast. Don't forget a couple of things. Number one, the HR Team of One community. Uh, that's very important. Don't forget the ultimate book of HR checklists, book that we wrote, uh, Getting HR Right, simple step-by-step -step ways of, of not making, uh, well, as John would call it, not making the stupid mistakes uh, that can happen in <laughs> in HR. And what else you got, John? Anything else to send our people off with? Yeah, so it's more of a request, right? And so as you listen to this story, what questions do you have about AI? I would love you guys just to flood us with emails going, what about this, John? And we think this, and then we, right? we want to hear that interaction. We want to make sure that you come back to there. The other thing that I want to announce, Chuck, Sam, is it okay? Yeah, Sam says it's okay, Chuck. Is it all right? Announce, announce. All right, so starting June 21st, 2023, we are starting a membership program. This membership program, we will meet twice a month on, I think, Wednesdays. We're going to meet twice a month on Wednesdays. Um, Chuck and I will be leading conversations about the HR topics that matter to the group. Um, we're also going to be sharing, we're going to get guy, we're going to get some uh, smart people. Uh, we're going to have in, I've got a couple already lined up. Um, in fact, just today, Chuck, this is a big announcement. I don't know if I, can I tell you? Do it. I don't Do it. Know. I don't know when it will happen, but my brother, Dr. William Tallheimer, Doc. happens to be one of the leaders in le leadership learning and development, um, is working on his new book. Uh, um, and so I am hoping that I can maybe talk, give him a little poll and have him come on for that. But that's the type of person we're going to have on probably once every three or four meetings, we'll have somebody come on, we'll call that our guide and guru. Those individuals that sign up for the annual membership, sign up for the annual membership, uh, will get the ultimate book of HR checklist and our small guide to HR business, or the small business guide to HR. Um, and so it's great, we're, we're really excited about this membership program. Um, we've designed it with you, the HR professional in mind. Uh, definitely start signing up we will put the information link in the podcast in notes. So it'll all be there. So excited. Can't wait for you guys to join us. Thank you, John. You have been listening to the HR Stories podcast, where there's a lesson in every story. I think he's AI. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the HR Stories podcast. The material presented in this podcast is for informational purposes only. Chuck and John always recommend using an employment lawyer or HR consultant to handle any legal concerns or HR issues. We do our best to double check sources and make sure the information we are providing is accurate. We may eliminate or embellish without changing the basic narrative to make the story easier to understand. In certain circumstances, we may change identifying information to protect the innocent. The HR Stories broadcast is brought to you by the team at HR Stories. The team at HR Stories is designed to help anyone with HR responsibilities be better at managing the employee experience. To engage with us, go to the HRStoriesTeam.com and learn more about how the team at HR Stories can support your business or nonprofit. Thank you for listening to the HR Stories podcast, where there is a lesson in every story. <laughs>